Right, Xabi Alonso, 13 months in charge at Leverkusen. From relegation to top of the Bundesliga. Really impressive start. Very impressive. I mean, I am convinced that uh, maybe half, maybe a quarter of a coach's success is choosing the right team mm -hmm. rather than the skill. And that was a really wise choice because Leverkusen, yes, looked like they were heading for relegation, but really a bounce back was probably inevitable with anyone coming in, uh, let alone somebody who's so good mm -hmm. at coaching and at motivating players and at uh, inspiring them. Mm, that just makes me think about, you know, especially as, as a coach, man management, right? Like, how do you get the best out of players? Do we get have any insight on that, Rafa, and how he deals with individual players? I mean, the grandeur of Xabi Alonso, a guy that's won everything, you know, and you've got these young players going... <laughs> that's a big part of you it. Know? That's a big part of it, and it shouldn't be underestimated yeah. because, of course, you can convince players through the strength of your arguments and your tactical ideas, but the fact that he's speaking to you from a position of having won everything and having been exposed to all these different ideas and having sort of distilled his own principles from it, I think is hugely impressive in the first place. People at the club have told me that he's very, very strict, mm. uh, will not tolerate people not being 100% in training, uh, punctuality, all the kind of things that you'd associate with somebody who's won so many things, he demands of his players. And again, I think for a team and for a club that has sometimes been a bit of a comfort zone for players who either perhaps haven't quite got what it takes to go all the way mm. and have sort of landed at a level that it's kind of good but never really that good at Leverkusen, or if it was players who are looking at the club as a mere stepping stone and just sort of concentrate on getting out as quickly as possible. It was very important, I think, to have somebody in who's really instilled that sense of, no, we have to win now. We have to really be as good as possible as a team and individually and drive that home through his own, again, through his own behavior. Mm -hmm. And he's been very infectious and... The people there, and maybe that's something that you asked me before we mm. started, um, when he does a speech in front of the uh, staff members, they weren't sort of blown over by the rhetoric. Yeah, I think, I, I think you, either you or someone else wrote about that. Yeah, I thought it was really I, I fascinating did, to I did. hear. But, but they, um, they believe him. Mm. And he says things like, you know, if we do this and that, we're going to win. And they are winning at the moment, and the mood is is incredible at the club. Can I just think, like, if if you're a top top coach, I mean, does does top coach equal charisma? I mean, Mourinho did it well, but realistically, I, I think even Guardiola, you're kind of a bit inward, a bit awkward, just a bit really smart. Public speaker's probably not your forte. You just care about football. Yes, but I think it being able to speak regularly in front mm. of twenty three, twenty five young men and you know a third of them will be unhappy for one reason or another i think you have to have charisma you don't have to be an incredible orate, orator mm. but um and he has the charisma um and maybe he just considered you know speaking in front of the staff less of a priority for him which is probably uh, understandable but yeah i think coaching is comes down to helping players mm -hmm. helping players perform and if you can do that either through being brilliant in terms of how you empathize with them or you know you relate to them on a, on a emotional level or if it comes from more sort of pragmatic um, technical help you know if you do this you'll be better you know go mm -hmm. there do this play the ball here position yourself there if you can combine all these things then you've got the making of a of a superstar coach, and I think it was clear very early on um, last season. I wrote when they got knocked out by Roma in the semi final. It almost doesn't matter that he's not winning a trophy this year, and that mm. they got knocked out because you can see that that Alonso is going to be a superstar, and this season is just the continuation of that. Yeah, I mean, just picking up on something Rafa said there, there was a really good article on site actually by Liam Tharm who mm. wrote about, you know, why so many holding midfielders are going on to become managers. And I think there was a study saying around 42% of former um, players who are managers were holding midfielders. And I think, 
you know, if you want somebody, you know, obviously Chabi Alonso has been there and done it mm. with, with some of the best clubs, but if you want somebody to tell you, you know, where to go and what to do and how to improve your game, a holding midfielder is a place where, you know, you can see the game happening around you, you've got more of an understanding of it. I think Guardiola has spoken about it in the past, saying, you know, when you're a striker, you're thinking about scoring. <laughs> when you're a midfielder, you know, you've got to know what's happening on the entire pitch, where to position yourself. Mm. And yeah, there aren't many people, better people to listen to in that regard as just someone like Chabi Alonso and that in itself, I think, commands a lot of respect. I wonder if there's uh, any comparison we can make with <laughs> someone like Xabi Alonso, Mikel Arteta, in comparison to Steven Gerrard, Frank Lampard, and how, I guess, we've got four players there who were very good at their job, but two that haven't really excelled in that managerial side of things. Is it as simple as saying, the, you know, the Spanish style or where Mikel Arteta and Xabi Alonso grew up gave them a bit more of some sort of know-how than perhaps Gerard and, 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 and Lampard or, or the leagues they were exposed to and the managers they probably played under um, has affected how they've gone on to be managers or can we go on that kind of midfielder versus... Yeah, potentially. I mean, I think with the managers you're talking about who mm. have done well, mm. Arteta, Alonso, Guardiola, there, there's, you know, they've kind of been wedded to one way of playing throughout mm. their entire career you look at Lampard and Gerrard they've been exposed to lots of different ways of playing and you know you don't really associate an identity with someone like Frank Lampard you know he's played in Chelsea for all that time but what is his you know philosophy about football mm. it's it's unclear whereas with someone like Guardiola who's been brought up all the way through the Barcelona Arteta as well has had exposure to that kind of football Chabi Alonso of course too mm. I think there's a bit more of a focus on 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 what they view as, as as good football and how they want to play and maybe that helps in you know transmitting that message because they have such a strong base of this is what we want to do if you like this video click subscribe for more content like this we'll be joined by the likes of david ornstein matt slater adam crafton Carl Lanker, and plenty more through the season to bring you the inside track to the biggest stories in football if you'd like to listen to the full episodes for free search the athletic football podcast wherever you get your podcast from